as you can readily see, these are the bills. And this is what I have to pay them with. Five, six, seven. I owe you a dollar, I owe you a dollar and a half, I owe you 47 cents, I owe you six bits. Whose are those? Uncle Joe, Uncle Joe, Uncle Joe, Uncle Joe. And this one has a paw print on it. Well, he wanted to buy a can of flea powder. <laughs> Uncle Joe, do you think it's right to dip into the cash box? Well, the manager of the hotel can't go around with that money in his pocket. Why not? The owner does. <laughs> Here's a bill from Doc Stewart for $38. Now, what's this for when nobody's sick? That's what I still owe him on Betty Jo. Uh, well, maybe we should give her back and call it even. <laughs> it's nice to know that one's sisters love her so much. <laughs> I might have to give you all back and get a refund in order to pay these bills. Couldn't we pay a little on each one? I got a scheme cooking that's going to pay off all them puny debts and make us all independently wealthy. Uncle Joe. Kate, this is not one of my usual visionary ideas. This one's solid, practical. I'm turning the shady rest into an ostrich farm. <laughs> now, about these bills. There's real money to be made in ostriches. All you got to do to start is to have a man ostrich and his wife. And before you know it, you got more ostriches than you can pluck feathers out of. <laughs> Women stick them in their hats for decorations. Uncle Joe, they haven't done that in years. That's why it's the right time for ostriches. When the feathers come back, we'll have a corner on the market. Now, I can get this pair of ostriches. No, you can't. Oh, yes, I can. I met a fellow down at the feed store this morning. He's selling off his circus. He had a couple of matched ostriches. Uncle Joe, could I just get around to the real bad news? Okay. Yeah. This is a letter from Mr. Gurney at the Pixley Bank. He's paying us a visit tonight. What for? Well, it doesn't say. But I suspect it has something to do with the fact that I haven't made a mortgage payment in six months. Oh, Gurney's no problem. Well, I'll brief him on my ostrich farm and feed him a couple of slabs of your apple pie, and he'll be begging you to let them payments slide another six months. <laughs> Mr. Gurney, would you like another piece of pie? Well, uh... Hold on, Kate. Before you give him another hunk, have him answer the two-slab question. Uncle Joe, Mr. Gurney is a guest in our home. That is a two-slab question. Is this going to be our home or ain't it? Well, Mrs. Bradley, I'm afraid I have some bad news. That answers the question. <laughs> Mrs. Bradley, in order to obtain added capital for my bank, I've had to take in some new associates. The policy of the bank is much stricter now. They want their money. Well, if I could just have a little more time. Tell her about the deal I got cooking that's going to put us on easy street. We're turning the shady rest into an ostrich farm. No, not now, Uncle Joe. Uh, Mr. Gurney, couldn't... Uh... Couldn't we have some kind of an extension? Well, um, maybe two weeks. My associates won't like it, but I'll talk them into it somehow. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> but, Bedlow, it's only two more weeks. I told you to evict Kate Bradley last night. Yes, I know. Gurney, I went through a lot of finagling to get my superiors at the C&FW Railroad to invest money in this tin-plated petty cash box. And I stuck my neck out for one reason only, to close down the Shady Rest Hotel forever. Oh, how did I ever let myself get into a spot like this? By being too soft-hearted to press people like Kate Bradley for the money they owe you? You got a thumb, man, and you got somebody under it. Bear down. Squeeze a little. Get a little dirt on it. Bedlow, you are a cruel, heartless, inhuman fiend. I owe it all to a happy childhood. <laughs> Mom, we figured out how we're going to save the hotel. We're all going to get jobs, and we're going to pay back the money that we owe to the bank. Now, hold it. If you've got any ideas about quitting school, forget them. Well, we're going to get part-time jobs. After school. And on the weekends. That's a coward's way out. Wouldn't any of us have to work for your mother to go along with me on the ostrich farm? Uncle oh, Joe, forget it. Okay, that's the way you feel about it. Where are you going, Uncle Joe? See if I got any clean spats. I want to look presentable tomorrow when I go into Pixley to look for a position. And I see, Mom, everything's just going to work out fine. Yeah, you haven't got a thing to worry about. Except making a ninny of myself in front of everybody. What's the matter with Mom? I don't know. 
Maybe she's upset because she had to give up her lifelong dream of living on an ostrich farm. <laughs> We're going job hunting after school. Oh. Billy's going to try and get a job as Doc Stewart's office assistant. And Bobby's going to try the hood of your library. Uh-huh. Uh, what, what kind of a job are you hunting for? Well, I don't know shorthand like Billy Joe, and I'm not an expert on books like Bobby Joe, so all that's left is picking apples for Ben Miller or helping Fred Ziffel out on his pig farm. <laughs> well, whether you get a job or not, I'm real proud of all of you. Well, Mom, we gotta go. Well, goodbye, dear. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, honey. Bye. Bye. Good luck. <laughs> yes, it gives you a wonderful feeling when a family rallies against trouble. <laughs> Joe, when was the last time you were in to see me? Oh, I remember when I took your tonsils out. That was Bobby Joe. Oh, that must have been when your appendix was acting up. And that was Betty Joe. When was the last time you came in to see me? When Mom brought me in to have my formula changed. <laughs> if all my patients were as healthy as you, I wouldn't have any. Stick your tongue out. But, Doctor, Stick it, it out. out. And... <laughs> Lovely, simply beautiful. But, Doctor, Here, put this under your but tongue. Hold it. Me. Doc, there's nothing wrong with me. Nothing wrong with you. No, I came over to see if you needed someone to help you out in your office. Doing what? Uh, answering the phone. I answered myself. I could take messages when you weren't here. Sarah does that down at the exchange. I know you need someone to tidy up your office. It is tidy. Look at that examination table. Clean enough to eat your lunch off of. Had your lunch yet? Yes, sir. Well, I haven't. I'm soft boiling an egg. <laughs> you know, you could use a filing system. That is my filing system. Oh. Hey, how about some typing? I never answer any mail. Oh. Well, how about... Hey, something's burning. Uh-oh, my toes, my toes. <laughs> Always got to be a better color when I put the goggles on first. <laughs> how about your prescriptions? I could type them up real nice and neat so the druggist could read them. Are you trying to get me in trouble with a medical association? <laughs> get me the salt. I'm sorry, Billy Joe, but I just can't afford to hire anybody. Well, now, just maybe you could if I were to write to some of your patients and to remind them to pay up what they owe you. They'll pay me when they get around to it. Oh. Well, you don't happen to know of anybody that does need any secretarial help, do you? Not offhand, no. I see. Well, thanks anyway. Hey, wait a minute. Is your mother in trouble? Oh, things are a little slow, but everything will be all right. Sounds serious. Oh, nothing we can't handle. If we could just get a little work. Bobby, Betty, and Uncle Joe are looking for a job, too. Uncle Joe, that must be serious. Oh, now, don't you worry Wait a minute. I've been thinking what you said about writing letters to people that owe me. Even if you get a few answers, it'll pay me to hire you. But, Doc, you said... I'll get the records of the house calls and office visits of people that owe me. Here, here. There you are. Oh, Doc, are you sure you're not just making me a job? Well, of course not. You're doing me a favor. Look, desk's almost cleaned up. Sit down now and get to work. <laughs> My aid's getting cold. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't think I've got any kind of work around here you could do. Well, couldn't I feed the pigs for you? No, that's Darcy's job. That's why I married her. <laughs> well, maybe I could take over feeding them on the weekends so you and Mrs. Ziffel could go out together. What for? <laughs> have fun. I never have no fun going out with her. All she does is sit there and worry about whether she fed the pigs or not. <laughs> if I feed them, she won't have to worry. I'm very reliable. Uh, when was the last time you and Mrs. Ziffel went to town together? When we got married. <laughs> you ought to try it again. Oh, gosh, Mr. Ziffel, I sure do need a job. You trying to earn some money to buy yourself a new football? Oh, no, sir. That's good. Old Arnold here, he don't like football. Doesn't? Yeah, his father wound up being one. I'm sorry. It could have been worse, though. 
He made more of a name for himself as a football than he would have as a pig. He got booted over the goalpost for the final point that won the Rose Bowl game. Oh, what do you say, Mr. Ziffel? If Billy and Bobby get jobs and I don't... Oh, are they job hunting, too? Yes. Your mama having money trouble? Oh, you know how it is. Well, now, let's see. How would you be on taking care of young'uns for their parents? I'm the best babysitter in the valley. Oh, but you and Mrs. Ziffel don't have any children. But we got grandchildren. Arabella's done it again. <laughs> yeah, Keith, the girls told us about your business problems. We're sorry to hear about it. Now, me and Floyd's got a little put away, and we'd be glad to lend to help you out. Oh, that's very sweet of you, fellas, and I appreciate it, but I couldn't. Oh, it's just sitting there in the bank. Yeah, we're always afraid somebody's gonna knock it off the bureau and break it. <laughs> no. Ask her about the laundry. What laundry? Dirty laundry. Oh, how about the dirty laundry? <laughs> I don't know. How about the dirty laundry? Now, what dumbhead here means is that we've got to find somebody else to do our laundry. We're not satisfied with the way it's being done. Yeah, Charlie's always complaining I put too much starch in it. <laughs> Besides, we can't use the washing machine at the boarding house no more. That's right. This is Donnie who's using it to slosh your elderberries for a new batch of wine. Yeah, you can't use it for a month afterward. Just purples up everything. Well, if you boys want your laundry done, you just bring it over here and I'll do it for you. No charge. But, Kate... No charge. And I want you to take along one of my fresh baked pies before you leave. Doggone it, ain't that the stubbornest female ever you did see? Yeah. Now, there's just got to be some way to help her. <laughs> yeah. Ain't that the smartest critter? Look how nice he printed that sign. <laughs> <laughs> hey, pony up for the dog's kitty. Too slow. I'll show you, okay? to you how much each of us has made, and you can keep a running account of it. And you can start by putting down $7.50 from the Shady Rest Secretarial Service. <laughs> $7.50. And $5 from the Shady Rest Conservatory of Music. Good. And don't forget $4 for the Shady Rest Pig Sitting Service, and I'm going to pig sit for Mrs. Ziffel again next week. And I would like to announce the formation of the Shady Rest Laundry. Got my first customer today, Mrs. Donahue. But you shouldn't be... Oh, she begged me to. Her wash is still coming out elderberry purple. Hello, Uncle Joe. Hi. Hi. Any luck in Pixley today? No. Went to the box factory and offered my services for their executive ranks. They got no vision. They're satisfied with those incompetents they got. <laughs> okay, we've got less than two weeks and a little more than $120 to go. Can we do it? You bet. Of course. What do you say, Uncle Joe? These spats is a cutting off my circulation. <laughs> you go out and look for some honest work. You know, $98.50 isn't bad. In fact, it's fantastic. But it isn't enough. Yeah, I'm almost at the bottom of Doc Stewart's bills. Fred Ziffel doesn't want to go out with Mrs. Ziffel anymore. <laughs> and the laundry business is petering out, too. Well, hi, Uncle Joe. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Uncle Joe. 
Oh, Uncle Joe, we were worried about you. Oh, I had a late meeting with the president of the Pixley Power Company. Oh? He ain't retiring for five years. Did you have supper? Yeah, Pixley Diner. The fellow there offered me a job in a short order cook. Say the fellow needs a short order cook? Kate, that ain't my line of work. No, but it's mine. Ma? Look, I've been dishing up short orders all my life. Time I got paid for it. But, Kate... If everybody else can help, so can I. Adam and Eve on a raft. Wreck them. Adam and Eve on a... Mr. Miss Clegg. You got my order? Oh, no. Uh, what's Adam and Eve on a raft? Two eggs on toast. Read the order. Uh, how do I wreck them? Scramble them. <laughs> Two E, Auntie. Adam. One liter. One liter. <laughs> Mr. Clay, what's a liter? The special beef stew. Where's my egg order? Well, uh, Adam and Eve are wrecked, but the raft is still in dry dock. <laughs> Get with it. French fries. You didn't order any. All it says here is two E on T. It doesn't say a thing about FFs. French fries always go with eggs. Look, if you don't want it. No, 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 I'll get them. I'll get them. <laughs> Just keep your shirt on. I'll uh, keep Adam and Eve warm. Where's the leader? Uh, I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. <laughs> Clean up the kitchen means hash. Why don't you say so? It'd be so much easier. All right, an order of hash. What are you peeling the spud for? Uh, for the FFs, for Adam and Eve. They're already peeled and sliced. They're in the ice box. Oh. Just dump some into the grease. Yeah, I will. Oh, I've never seen such a stupid. Will you just yes, dump I'm some into the it. grease? I'm gonna do it right now. I'll be with you in a minute, kid. <laughs> Where's my order of stew? You mean leader. <laughs> Beef stew? Swiss on rye of pan. That's Swiss, two Swiss, Swiss cheese sandwiches on rye, rye bread. An order of beef stew. Yeah, One order of beef stew. Beef a stack stew. of wheat. The batter's already beef made. Stew. Bacon and eggs, sunny side. And don't forget the potatoes. A hamburger of pear, both with. Both a bacon with. and eggs, sunny side. And don't forget the potatoes. No, An order of hash. 
And a big salad on toast. And a bowl of chili. How about my scrambled eggs? Coming. So's Christmas. Sorry for the delay, fellas, but I got this creep working for me today. She's trying to handle a six-burner stove with a one-burner brain. <laughs> well, at last. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 Mrs. Bradley, I think... <laughs> $32.16. You count the $12.50 I took in selling your mom's preserves? Yes. I could have done better, Kay, but your quince didn't go over too big with the public. We're $5.84 short. Hasn't anybody got any money? <laughs> we forgot Fred Astaire. <laughs> I'll get the kitty. You're just wasting your time. How much did anybody pay to watch him lumber around on his hind legs? <laughs> oh, I think oh, we made it. We you hear that, Bidlow? Curses, files. Are you coming in? Ah, I like to be alone in my moment of grief. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Gurney. We were waiting for you. We've got the money for you. The whole hundred and thirty-eight dollars. This is cruel. Cruel. Eight dollars and twenty-two cents in cash, and the rest in accounts receivable. From all the people we worked for. Mrs. Bradley, I can't tell you how happy this makes me. Now, I'll just write you out a receipt for this. Hold it! Don't give him that receipt. Homer Bedlow. As a representative of the controlling interest of the Pixley Bank and Trust Company, I am foreclosing the mortgage on this property. Everybody out! I don't know how you got in that bank. Probably crawled in through a sewer pipe. <laughs> and, and you can't foreclose because we can pay. What? With these? <laughs> Idle promises. It's money that's owed us, and when we're paid, we'll turn it over to you. Well, I'm not interested in the money that's owed you. I'm only interested in the money that's owed us. If you haven't got the cash, out you go. We're serving the papers, Gurney. <laughs> this is more fun than the railroad business. <laughs> oh, Gurney, the papers. You've got them, haven't you? Yes, yes, right here, but they haven't been signed. What? I forgot to take them over to the county seat for the judge's signature. Well, go get it! It'll take a week to process them. Do oh, you incompetent and poop? Okay, Bedlow, out. Now, just a minute. This is still our property and your trespass. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Mr. Gurney, for being so forgetful. Oh, it was the only thing I could think of in case you didn't raise the money. I'm afraid it's all I'll be able to do. You'll have to have the money by next week. Maybe we can get everybody to pay us by then. <gasps> Money's just as short with them as it is with us. I'm afraid the only thing that can save us now is a miracle. <laughs> I hope you brought your wife. <laughs> This has been a Filmways presentation.